Good evening. My name is Kenan Mylander, and I'm the chief of Mid County EMS. Thank you for being with us to celebrate the life and service of Assistant Chief Chad Magram through his EMS and first responder service. When God created public servants, he certainly did not fall short with Chad. In fact, Chad's life has been dedicated to serving others. He served not only in EMS, but in fire and law enforcement as well. Chad knew the many dangers, evil, sickness, and injury that existed from all angles and sides, and yet he still went out to help his fellow man every moment he could. Because Chad served his community in the roles of EMS, fire, and law enforcement, I would like to honor his service tonight with a short tribute to each role. I could easily find Chad in each tribute as they exemplify what he stood for. Now, please stand and join me in hearing and honoring As I perform my duty, Lord, whatever may, whatever be the call, help to guide and keep me safe from dangers big and small. I want to serve and do my best, no matter what the scene. I pledge to keep my skills refined, my judgment quick and clean. This calling to give of myself most do not understand, but I stand ready all the time to help my fellow man, to have the chance to help a child restore his laugh with glee. A word of thanks I may not hear, but knowing is enough for me. The praise of men is fine for some, but I feel truly blessed that you, O oh Lord, have chosen me to serve the EMS. Amen. You may be seated. Please bow your heads and join me in hearing and honoring a prayer for law enforcement officers. O oh, Almighty God, whose great power and eternal wisdom embraces the universe, watch over all policemen and law enforcement officers. Protect them from harm and the performance of their duty to stop crime, robberies, riots, and violence. We pray, help them keep our streets and homes safe day and night, we recommend them to your loving care because their duty is dangerous. Grant them your unending strength and courage in their daily assignments. Dear God, protect these brave men and women. Grant them your almighty protection. Unite them safely with their families after duty has ended. Amen.
Evil is powerless if the good are unafraid, President Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan is known not only as President of the United States, but also had some very inspirational things, had said some very inspirational things. I would like to add to this quote by saying that bravery is not the absence of fear, but resilience despite that fear. The police are the public, and the public are the police. The police being only members of the public who are paid to give full-time attention to duties which are incumbent in every citizen in the interests of community welfare and existence. Robert Peel. In 1829, Sir Robert Peel established the London Metropolitan Police Force and became known as the father of modern policing. He produced a list of guiding principles that remain as valid today as when they were written two centuries ago. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Maya Angelou. Police officers have the unique opportunity and ability to return some sense of dignity to victims of crime and even can restore a person who is accused of the crime by treating them with respect. You don't have to respect the person's actions. In fact, you probably find those actions reprehensible. But remember the power of unconditional respect taught in the book of that same name. Blessed are the peacekeepers, for they shall be called the children of God. Matthew 5, 9. This one is pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure that most officers, whether or not they are particularly religious, believe that this to be true. Officers put themselves in harm's way every day in the pursuit of justice and the protection of the innocent from those who would hurt or even kill them. For this, they are rarely shown gratitude. In fact, they are frequently ridiculed for their victorious acts. But God knows that what you do for your communities is laudable and necessary work. You will be rewarded in heaven. When you think about quitting, remember why you started, unknown. It's tough to be a cop or in public service in general. It's always been tough, but these days it's even more difficult. It's easy to get down and think about a different career, something in business or education or a variety of other vocations. For some, pulling the pin is the right thing to do, but for most of us, staying on the job is the only possible path. Higher character, train skill, Peter Schultz. The former CEO of Porsche gave this advice as his company was developing high-end sports cars, such as the venerable classic Porsche 911. With agencies across the country facing a staffing crisis, there has been talk in some circles about lowering hiring standards. For myriad reasons, this is a sub-optional short-term solution to what really is a long-term problem. Police departments and first responders should continue to hire individuals of the highest possible character so that young people look at the police and first responders in their cities and towns and say, I want to be like that. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to make a game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Michael Jordan. In law enforcement, so many things can and regularly do go wrong, and yet police officers press on in their mission to serve and protect. Rarely are they thanked for their efforts. They seek not thanks nor praise, but the feeling of achievement from a job. Courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. Winston Churchill. Police leaders routinely must stand at a podium and give briefings on a host of issues from police shootings to missing children. They get pretty good at standing up and talking, but it's equally important to sit down and listen. Police leaders routinely attend community meetings where they sit and listen and answer questions from concerned citizens. When everything seems to be going against you, remember that the airplane takes off against the wind, not with it. Henry Ford. These are trying times indeed. The coronavirus outbreak has had significant impact on agency staffing and officer health. Officers have been sent home to quarantine while the remaining members of the department are stretched very thin. The streets are largely desolate, but criminals are becoming 
emboldened to commit property crimes, racing in and out of grocery markets and retail stores and helping themselves to whatever they please, knowing that there will be no consequences for their crimes. Crimes, domestic violence calls, and in some cases, enforcement of stay-at-home orders. You're doing all this even as staffing shortages worsen with infected officers at home in quarantine. But we as a nation will eventually get through this and we'll take flight once more. Law enforcement officers, Chad, thank you for all the work you have done and continue to do. Please bow your heads and join me in hearing and honoring the firefighter's prayer. When I am called to duty, God, wherever flames may rage, give me strength to save a life, whatever be its age. Help me to embrace a little child before it's too late, or save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert to hear the weakest shout, and quickly and efficiently to put the fire out. I want to fill my calling and to give the best in me, to guard my neighbor and protect his property. And if according to your will, I have to lose my life, bless with your protecting hand my loving family from strife. Amen. What are the requirements to be a firefighter and the job types? Someone once said that a firefighter needs to know about 42 different trades and careers to be a good firefighter. At first, that sounds unrealistic, but when you think about it, it is highly possible a firefighter can be called upon at any moment notice to do any of the following trades, professions, jobs, or careers as part of their duty routine on duty. Here are those 42 skills a firefighter may be called upon to perform. First one, a plumber. Second one, electrician. Third one, carpenter. Fourth one, social worker. Fifth, psychiatrist. Sixth, auto dealer, de auto detailer. Seventh, auto repairman. Eighth, maid. Ninth, mechanic. Tenth, teacher. Eleventh, chef or cook. Twelfth, administrative assistant. Thirteenth, dishwasher. Fourteenth, janitor. Fifteenth, landscaper. Sixteenth, painter. Seventeenth, police officer. Eighteenth, service station attendant. Nineteenth, accountant. 20th, financial advisor, 21st, truck driver, 22nd, facility manager, 23rd, food server, 24th, waitress or waiter, 25th, recreational coordinator, 26th, career planner slash advisor, 27th, maintenance person, handyman, 28th, dietitian, 29th, appliance repair person. 30th, heating, ventilation, air conditioner repair person. 31st, tow truck driver. 32nd, customer service representative. 33rd, 
public educator, 34th public information provider, 35th computer techni technician, 36th TV repair person, 37th fire prevention inspector, 38th fire investigator, 39th medical professional, professional, first responders, EMT or paramedic, 40th hazardous material first responder, 41st rescue technician, basic or advanced, and 42nd firefighter. Oh yes, on occasion we are skilled asked to put out fires. Whether or not they respond to a single call, they may still do many of these above items while on duty at the firehouse. Talk to most senior firefighters. They can provide examples of having to do a good majority, if not more, of those above mentioned items at some point in their career, obviously some more than others. Firefighters are jacks of all trade. Some people forget that we are the folks people call when they cannot figure out what to do, or more commonly, cannot afford to call a repair person, especially at three in the morning on a holiday. When they may not want to pay triple time for a plumber to come to their house to stop the water flowing from a burst pipe, they have no problem calling 911, knowing we will come and at least stop the problem, or with some thinking, we may solve the problem. If nothing else, we will probably stop the immediate problem and then direct them to who they need to contact to fully solve the problem. If you haven't figured it out by now, we don't just save lives and property anymore. We are truly jacks of all trade, and we must be masters at our profession and the core expectations of what we are here for serving our community, protecting lives and property, and making a positive difference every day we are on duty. If you do not embrace the challenge of a firefighter faces every day, not the life-threatening or life-saving challenges, those are usually far and few. You will be frustrated and unhappy instead of getting angry with the people who call 911 for our assistance do your best to have patience, tolerance, and most of all, compassion for the current situation. To you, it may be an unnecessary call. To them, it may be an emergency of a lifetime. More importantly, though, we need to educate our future firefighters and let them know we don't just save lives and property. Instead, we are here to help the people who pay our salaries solve the problems they are faced with in a courteous and professional way to ensure we leave them with the impression that they cannot live without us. To the firefighters here tonight and to Chad, thank you for the work you have done and continue to do. From EMS1.com, EMS paramedic Benjamin H. Hawk submitted the following that he wrote to give those outside the profession a look into the lives of EMS providers and for those within to know they are not alone. He noted writing about the darker aspects of this career helps empty his mind and maintains his mental wellness while informing the general public of our humanity. When you look in my eyes, what do you see? Do you see the lines from years of laughter the bags under my eyes from years without restful sleep. Maybe you see the blue color and wonder how it seems a bit faded. Maybe you see me focus so intensely that you know I know what I'm doing, that I'm listening. But I hope you don't look too close. I don't want the pain behind my eyes to add to yours. What my eyes have seen is my burden to bear. You and your family called for help. You prayed that your God would deliver you from this moment. You keep praying long after I arrive. Those prayers continue even when looking into my eyes. You can't see that God sent someone like me. Do you see my hands? Do you notice the scars from a life already lived? Do you notice that they are steady even when outstretched? You won't see them falter during the intense moments. When armed with my tools, they are rocks. 
and without, they are soft like worn leather. Do you notice the ring under my glove? Is it from a happy life outside this place? Or is it the last tangible thing from a broken vow I'm not ready to let go of? You see me, but only a glimpse of the person I am. Do you notice me diligently set to work on the task at hand? You know what I am. You see me and my kin darting around. You may even think you know what we do, but you've never imagined the worst day of your life. I and my kin have spent a lifetime imagining the worst day. For this reason is why my eyes are focused, my hands steady and strong. But what you don't see is, I have these lines around my eyes because I've earned them. Sometimes they're from having to laugh to keep from crying. Sometimes they've earned their place by having to shut my eyes so tight to push the terrible away from the forefront of my mind. The bags under my eyes are from years of working throughout the night and never getting a restful night's sleep. But they're also from being a single parent that only sees his children on the weekends, and instead of sleeping, I sit next to their beds while they dream just to get more time with them. The focus is from knowing I've seen this before and knowing it didn't go well the last time. Or when you hand me your sick child, all I can see are my own children, and I lock into doing everything as right as possible because in that moment, your child is mine as well. Yes, I am listening, but what you can't see is my mind, being 10 steps ahead of what my hands are doing. The color has faded a bit over the years, but you can't know that they have seen the best and worst of humanity for more years than I'd really care to admit. Because of that, I pray you don't ask what's the worst thing I've ever seen, because I don't want to relive something that already haunts me. The scars on my hands, they show you a life lived full of mistakes, wrong turns, and hard learned lessons. But you can only see the scars on the outside. You can't see the blood stains my mind will never forget, the hands held in the final moments, the tiny broken bodies, the desperate grip of those begging for a few more moments, or the last grip of a friend or brother with no words because there are none to be found. My hands are held steady by those I couldn't save, held true by the memory of the broken. They do not falter because of those that came before, and they will never waver for those yet to come. My hands are the tools my mind sets to work with. They give you a chance and prepare the next generation for their turn at this life. You don't see the ring that tells you I have a reason to go home and leave this life at the door. You can't see the driving force that is my reason for moving forward and know in your dark moments, my eyes will look upon you and my hands care for you as I'd want my own family seen and treated. You see me set to work and wonder how I can think, how I can feel, how I can communicate, and how I can do it all with little to no change in the tone of my voice and without any sign of fear. You think maybe I've seen too much and I'm numb to it, and in part, you're right, but the reality is that this is not a job I took by choice. This is a path I was called to do. You have no idea what all we do until your worst day. Yet I and those like me study and train, hoping never to have to employ the skills of those labors, yet ready and willing when it comes time. Your worst day is shared by me, my brothers, my sisters, and it will stay with us for longer than any of us will ever admit. In the darkness of your fear, we hope to shine a light, to stand between you and grave. We will do as trained and hope amongst hope that the divine are pleased with our efforts and allow you to draw at least one more breath. This is our charge. This is our life. It is our duty. It is a gift given to us by an authority we do not understand and fear to question. You know my title, but you have no idea who I am. To you, I am the paramedic. EMS providers and Chad, Thank you all for the work you have done and continue to do. Now I'd like to provide some time to anyone here who would like to say a few words and pay tribute to Chad. I'd like to start that off. Uh, one of our folks could not be here tonight. <clears throat> On behalf of Molly Fitzgerald, I'd like to read her letter to Chad. Hello, everyone. My name is Molly Fitzgerald, former member of Mid-County EMS and forever friend. Unfortunately, I am unable to get off work today and attend to honor Chad. I never wrote anything before like this, so please bear with me. I've known Chad close to over 30 years. That is a long time when you look back at all the memories I have of him, not only as a friend, but as my chief as well. 
If you are lucky enough to know Chad, you know there is always an adventure. In 2001, I became a member of Mid-County as a trainee. I wasn't sure what being an EMT was all about, so Chad allowed me to take part of being on the department to learn if it was for me. I knew Chad prior to joining the department, so when it came to joining the department, I saw a different side of him. I saw the dedication to not only his community, but his members of his department as well. You become a family member, not only to him, but his department as well. I used to call him Pa and Jenny Ma, because one time a community member thought Kenan and I were their children. We laughed so hard that day. We were always doing things together. We went camping, NASCAR races and conferences, mash bash, the deviled eggs, and if you were there, you knew the rest. Kind of weird right now, used to be the time for that conference again. I guess he wanted to start without us. Trips to Columbus, even to celebrate his birthday, Scooby-Doo took part in that trip. Trainings, etc. So many good times I could take all day with the stories and laughs. However, let me tell you about my first call with Chad. It was a rollover MVA on South State Route 19 with blizzard-like conditions, of course. On the way there, I was scared, not knowing what to do or expect. We arrive and Chad starts patient care. After getting the IV, he says, here, hold this and keep it warm in your coat. I was like, okay, no big deal. This isn't so bad. Next thing I know, life light is on the ground. One of the crew members got out his bag and started shoving this tube in the patient's mouth. I mean, it looked like he was jamming it in there. I was like, oh my gosh. Patient is already unresponsive, so I'm thinking to myself, what in the world are you doing? After the patient is loaded, we go to leave and Chad says, so, how was your first call? I just looked at him and was speechless. The look on my face had to be priceless. He goes, that well, huh? I said, well, why in the world was that guy shoving that tube thing in the patient's mouth over and over again? He laughs at me and laughs and says, he was trying to intubate the patient. Then he went on to explain why and how that works. That call that day was my first call ever, and it was the scariest time. Thanks to Chad, I continued to become a certified EMT. The knowledge, compassion, and his mentoring pushed me to go further. Hard to believe 20 years later, I've gone all the way to paramedic. Over the years, Chad would give us a gift at our department Christmas party. My favorite and most meaningful was one in 2011, the three ring binder with poems, a 9-11 tribute, and some EMS humor. He also gave each of us an EMS token. Chad took the time to put together and write a letter to us on the front. I still have that today, and I wanna share something that he said. I know many of these hero poems were written by someone touched by the death of a firefighter or EMT, but that really doesn't affect all that a hero is. You become a hero when you volunteer your time, yourself and your wonderful care and compassion. A hero doesn't have to be just someone that paid the ultimate sacrifice. I believe that everyone that puts themselves out there every day also qualifies as a hero. A poem that he shared called Silent Hero. The hand that quietly and ever so gently caresses life takes time to provide comfort and reasoning and insight. They are loved by all who know them and respectfully so. Guidance and leadership is part of their role. Strategically, they place their faith in their profession, followed by their peers and leading them to their destination. These hands have not, I'm sorry, these hands have led them where most dare not to go, never taking into consideration the danger that only some will know. Take time to notice these hands and who they are, acknowledge their existence and what they stand for. These same hands are seen in a different light as silent heroes work endlessly saving lives. Written by Cheryl Lassiter. Chad, you are and always will be a hero because like you said, I believe that everyone puts themselves out there to help others already qualifies as a hero. That is why you've done all these years. I know you are up there helping others each and every day like you always have. Thank you for being a good friend, my chief, mentor, and giving me opportunity and courage to be an EMT. I will forever hold on to those memories until we meet again, Molly. If anyone else would like to pay tribute, feel free to come forward.
Seeing no objection, I'll continue. I'd like to start by also reading a poem. Show me a person who spends endless hours in training without pay, and I'll show you a volunteer. Show me a person where a cry for help brings split-second dispatch, and I'll show you a volunteer. Show me a person who is devastated when lives are lost or maimed, and I'll show you a volunteer. Show me a person who is graciously welcomed as a next-door neighbor, and I'll show you a volunteer. Show me a person who takes ridicule more than compliments, and I'll show you a volunteer. Show me a person whose car is garaged with the grill facing out, and I'll show you a volunteer. Show me a person who sacrifices home life, TV, even the tender moments, and I'll show you a volunteer. Show me a person visibly moved at the strains of our national anthem, and I'll show you a volunteer. Show me a person who may be asked to give more than just dedication, and I'll show you a volunteer. Show me a person who is asked to give more and more and more, and I'll show you a volunteer. Chad is every bit of this poem. He has shown me and others what it means to be truly dedicated to the community. We have all had our side jobs or a variety of jobs. I used to do grounds maintenance with the schools, landscaping during college, went to a variety of fairs to show draft horses, and I still have my CDL in my pocket just in case. Chad's countless hours of commitment to Mid-County was not enough for him. He also had to serve in law enforcement and fire department roles. And if he wasn't doing that, he was working another EMS job. And if that wasn't that enough, he was teaching EMS. In fact, the only other non-public service job he ever talked about was working at the local grocery store during high school. I would like to take a moment to reflect on a few Bible verses that remind me of Chad. John 13, 34. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. Chad has always looked out for me. He showed me a lot of respect, even when I was first brought into Mid-County, and I'm not sure I deserved it. But he did anyway. Chad is like that with a lot of people. He's always asking, how you doing? What's up? And it wasn't just to make small talk. He actually took interest in your response and always offered help when someone was down. Matthew chapter 5, 1 through 7. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Chad sought out the best in me, the best in us, the best in his patience. He would seek ways to make someone else's day better. Chad was not afraid to hold the hand of the dying while speaking words of comfort to the family. He truly deserves to inherit the earth. Actually, now that I think about it, I would try to sit next to Chad at different events, not only for his insight on EMS, but his insight on life. So I could hear his opinion on a new brand of IV catheters and to hear what joke he's going to tell next. Now admittedly, he is the reason I am bald today. Me and my bald spot were sickening next to him and his full head of hair, and someone took a picture that included the backs of our heads. He joked about my bald spot and what it looked like. We laughed together over that, and even now, when I shave my head, I think of Chad and the light he brought to the room, even if it was at my expense. First Peter chapter 2, verse 17. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. When it came to EMS, my experience working with Chad is that he honored every patient, contact, every call made. When we seen him get direct with patients or family, it wasn't because he didn't care. It was because he was looking out for their best interest, trying to find the root of the problem so he could fix it. 
Chad takes the EMS and Fire Brotherhood very seriously. He always referred to Mid-County as his family. Now certainly, I throw the word dysfunctional in and, uh, from time to time, but Chad facilitated that feeling of family, brotherhood. He talked at length about his family with us, like we were all a part of that family. I am willing to bet that most of us could tell a story about his family. In speaking with his brothers and sisters, he spoke of us to them as well, also at great length. Honor the emperor. Now this part I think we can all relate to. I'm sure that we all have fond memories of being reminded of who is in charge. In fact, there is a phrase he used to use that probably would not be the most appropriate to repeat here. Although he did show an authoritarian side from time to time, he also showed compassion. He showed love, he showed honor, and for that, I honor him. Psalm 23, verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. When I think about calls that did not go my way, the ones that linger somewhere in the depths of my memories and yet sometimes still come forward, those are the calls that bother me. But for some reason, I cannot recall this type of call with Chad. That's not to say we haven't seen the terrible things together, because we have. Many of us have. But in the face of death, Chad brings comfort. When the stuff is really hitting the fan, Chad brings calm. Recently, some of us watched a video where the person said that people call us because there's chaos, and they are looking for us to bring calm to that chaos. For me, that was Chad. When a call came in and he checked in for that call, I knew he was with me. He was my rod and my staff, and he comforted me. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 13. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, Father, I'm sorry, fear not, I am the one who helps you. Tears are making us blurry. I admittedly have not been going to church nearly as much as when I was younger. At first, it was because I had too much fun in college, earning my eight-year, two-year degree. And when you live that lifestyle, it really is hard to get up on Sunday mornings. But let me be honest with you for a moment. I was dreading this day. I hated the fact that we lost a man who was worth so much to this world. I hated the fact that it brought me so much pain and anguish. But as I look back, my relationship with Chad. I now also have hope. He instilled in me some of the qualities I possess today. He taught me a lot about leadership and life. He took me by the hand and pulled me out of bad places. As I looked up some of these passages, quotes, and other things for tonight, I realized that Chad brought a lot of happiness kindness, and love to the world. He brought comfort and bravery. He brought confidence and compassion. I've seen a lot of Chad over the years, so I wondered what will it be like now. Well, I still see a lot of Chad around me. And no, that's not a fat joke because the casket is still open. I see a lot of him when I look in the mirror. I see a lot of him when I look into other people's eyes. He is there when I get in the ambulance, and he is with me one way or another driving home. As I prepared this for tonight, the pain was severe. But the longer I worked on this, the less painful it became. Chad has done, I'm sorry, Chad has done so much for me, for us, and for our community. We do not need to look far to see him. For me, he is still with us one way or another. I would like to end with sharing a few more things which remind me of Chad. To know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Courage is being scared to death, but saddling up anyway. 
John Wayne. What we have done for ourselves alone dies with us. What we have done for others and the world remains and is immortal. Albert Pike. Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. Thomas Edison. EMTs are privileged to play in life's great game. Too many unlucky people watch the action thunder by, stuck at a desk or watching it on television at home. Kelly Grayson. There is no higher honor than to be given the responsibility to care for another human being. Richard K. Shakespeare. Police officers, firefighters, EMTs, they are all out there every single day, literally just a phone call away for anyone who needs them. Doreen Cronin. Next to creating a life, the finest thing a man can do is save one. Abraham Lincoln. For me, I am driven by two main philosophies. No more today about the world than I knew yesterday and lessen the suffering of others. You'd be surprised how far that gets you. Neil deGrasse Tyson. I didn't become an EMT to get a front row seat to other people's tragedies. I did it because I knew the world was bleeding and so was I. And somewhere inside, I knew the only way to stop my own bleeding was to learn how to stop someone else's. Daniel Jose Older. I would invite you to please stand. Throughout most of history, the lives of firefighters and EMS providers have been closely associated with the ringing of a bell. As they began their hours of duty, it was the bell that started it off. Through the day and night, each alarm was sounded by a bell that called them to fight fire and to place their lives in jeopardy for the good of their fellow man. When the fire was out and the alarm had come to an end, the bell rang three times to signal the end. And now, our brother Chad has completed his task, his duties well done, and the bell rings three times in memory of and in tribute to his life and service. After the bell rings, I ask you to join me in a moment of silence in honor of Chad's service. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Blessed are you, Lord, God of mercy, who through your Son gave us a marvelous example of charity and the great commandment of love for one another. Send down your blessings on your servants who so generously devote themselves to helping others. Grant them courage when they are afraid, wisdom when they must make quick decisions, strength when they are weary, and compassion in all their work. When the alarm sounds and they are called to aid both friend and stranger, let them faithfully serve you in their neighbor. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I would like to thank everyone for coming out tonight and celebrating the life of service of Chad Magram. He's meant a lot to a lot of people. Thank you for being here tonight with us. You are dismissed.